the second largest rodent in North America. Have you ever seen one? Most of us refer to it as the beaver. Let's dive in and learn a little bit more about the beaver. Welcome. Today on Going Deeper, we're going to talk about beavers. We're going to look at some cool things. We're going to go underwater with beavers. We're going to look at their teeth. We're going to look at some skulls. We're going to see what they do when they eat wood. We're also actually going to watch one take a tree down and it actually hits my fro. And there's footage of it. Well, let's go. I've spent many days, weeks, years searching for the beaver. And normally when I find the beaver, it's swimming away from me. It doesn't matter whether I'm on a trip to the Yukon in Alaska or I'm here in Ontario. The beaver is always swimming away from me. Until recently, it's always eluded me. Big beavers, little beavers, winter beavers, spring beavers, it didn't matter. All the beavers normally just swam away from me. And don't get me wrong, it's pretty cool getting to watch a beaver as it swims. Yes, I've been fortunate to see the signs of a beaver where they've taken down trees and chewed it. Beavers love wood. Beavers eat wood. Sometimes they'll snack on the tree bark or the softer layers of the wood underneath. Beavers are known to store branches on muddy pond floors beneath their lodges so that they can eat during the winter when they spend most of their time inside. The cold water actually acts as a fridge to keep the stems fresh and preserve their nutrients. Wow, beavers are pretty smart to figure all that out. These herbivores also eat leaves, woody stems, and aquatic plants. Some of their favorite foods, poplar, aspen, willow, birch, and maple, which are also conveniently their primary building source. Beavers are very dexterous and tend to hold their food between their front paws to eat. Here in Canada, the beaver is actually quite iconic. Oh. Man, I lost that nickel. Oh. Wait, that one won't help me. Need to use this one. I heard a story once that if you kiss a beaver, that you'll have luck. So when I met Parka, I decided to test my luck. Well, I, maybe I made that up. But after I kissed Parka, I noticed this crazy creature one day on the side of the road. And as I observed it, I noticed that this creature was moving like a beaver, but it was wintertime. I thought beavers hibernated or went somewhere but to actually find a beaver in my neck of the woods it was awesome and watching the way that it moved through the snow i got all excited because there was nowhere that i could see that the beaver could go and then it vanished it was gone and so i investigated and upon investigating i noticed that it was living in the culvert so not only do foxes live in the culvert, like we learned in the last video, but beavers live in them too? Wow, this is crazy. There's so much going on in the beaver world. To understand beavers though a little bit better, we need to actually take a look at their skulls. I think any animal you should take a look at their skulls to learn a little bit more about them. Beavers are rodents. A bit like mice and rats, all rodents have teeth that grow constantly throughout their lives. They need to grind them down to keep them short. Beavers will grind their teeth on wood such as tree bark. If you look closely, their teeth are actually orange. Well, you don't actually have to look that closely because it stands out. The one with the broken orbital bone, that one was actually found in the wild and has been chewed on by other animals. This orange that color comes from the iron rich protective coating of enamel on the teeth because the softer dentine which is the bone tissue that forms the tooth wears away faster than the enamel the beaver
beaver's teeth wear down unevenly, giving the incisors a chiseled shape, which helps the beaver cut through hard objects like wood. The beaver's tail are very leathery in feel, and they have lots of different things that they help them, things like swimming or balancing upright. It also stores fat for the winter. Don't you wish you had a tail sometimes? On this walk looking for waterfalls, we found this tiny little baby bottom jaw. I'm pretty sure it's a beaver. What do you think? In my search for the beaver, I followed every lead I had, and I found this store that had beaver tails. You call that a beaver tail? Often people ask me if there is a trick to finding wildlife the way I do, and there is. You've got to go out, and you've got to sometimes bring a little trick with you. And no, that trick isn't my walking stick. The trick is actually my guitar. Listen, you can hear me play. I'm not very good, but if you play it in the right spot, sometimes you attract the right animal. And although it didn't happen this day, when I was at this spot another day, I noticed the beavers. It was pretty awesome. I actually noticed this one beaver and it was like, oh, what's that? It's swimming in the water. And then it got out and by seeing it, the tail, I knew exactly what it was. And then a little while later, another one came and another one came. and We ended up seeing four beavers. It was a pretty cool experience. Although these beavers don't really travel in style, there was one time in Idaho, USA in 1948 where the beavers were annoying the locals and they actually were trying to relocate the beavers and it was proving them difficult. So what they decided to do to get them to this protected area so they could be happy and live a happy and safe life was to parachute them down in wooden boxes so that they could chew themselves out. There were 76 parachuting beavers. Huh. Well, these beavers are pretty happy where they are and you can just see how chill they are swimming through the river. The thing that I'm wondering is, are these those ditch beavers that I have been seeing and got to spend a lot of time? I'm not sure about that, but the one thing I do know is that these are definitely different beavers and you can tell by the way that they swim through the water. The older, bigger ones seem to be nice and slow, where this little one is just zoop, 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 all over the place, left, right, he's just shaking and moving, he's just got so much energy. It's almost like people. Kids seem to have a little bit more energy and don't understand that sometimes it's nice to just do those simple things. The North American beaver is the second largest rodent next to the capybara, which is the largest. There are two species of beavers, the North American beaver and the Eurasian beaver. The North American beaver typically weighs between 35 and 65 pounds, are three to four feet long, standing one to one and a half feet tall. The Eurasian beaver is slightly smaller than the North American cousin. Beavers actually existed in the Ice Age, they say. But those beavers, they were huge. They were giant beavers. They grew to be two and a half meters long. I'm not sure if you've been paying attention, but notice how this beaver's swim stroke or at least the wake from this beaver is a little bit noisier than that big beaver. I'm assuming this is a small young beaver and this beaver is actually just trying to show off to mom being like, hey mom, like look how awesome I am and I can do this and that and well I'm just going to grab this piece of wood because that's what beavers do and I can swim and bring wood mom just like you and dad. And Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is just a big beaver and I'm not noticing. But to me, it seems like this is a much younger beaver trying to show off and impress the bigger beavers. Can you at least notice the swim pattern being different and or at least the wake being different than the other? 
See how much it's moving and shaking the water? Watch this next beaver that swims up after this small beaver goes. It's almost as if mom went first, then, then a little beaver went, and then a big beaver went. Look at how casual and slow, almost methodical this beaver is. Well, beavers don't just swim. Sometimes they're sneaky and they like to just hide and hang out in the edges because they don't actually want to be seen by their predator. Yeah, they're pretty smart. Beavers' large lungs allow beavers to stay submerged for extended periods of time. Imagine being able to hold your breath for up to 15 minutes. Most beavers can stay underwater for 6 to 8 minutes, which is quite lucky as they do spend most of their time in the water. Most humans can only hold their breath for 30 seconds. How long can you hold your breath for? I can't hold it for that long. Though their movement may be awkward on land, their webbed hind feet and rubber-like tails help them move swiftly through the water. They can swim up to 10 kilometers per hour. That's pretty fast. How fast do you think you can swim? What about how fast do you think you can run? Well, Beavers spend most of their time building dams with branches and small tree trunks. Dams slow down the flow of water in the river and it helps to create a pond. A pond is a deep, quiet space away from predators, right? We don't think about it, but if you're in the middle of that pond, those predators can't get you. And once they've made that dam, they live in that quiet water behind it. Dams come in all different sizes. Beavers are one of the few animals that actually change the ecosystem. They do this by blocking rivers and streams with their trees, mud, even rocks, creating new lakes, ponds, floodplains. Beavers build watertight dams made of woven sticks, reeds, branches, and saplings. Cocking together, all of this with mud and rocks, the dams form slow-moving ponds that reduce stream erosion and provide brand new habitat for small fish and other aquatic wildlife. You can see here in this video, one's actually hard at work, building and working on its dam, or its lodge, or whatever. There's a reason that that term busy as a beaver came about, and this beaver is a great example. I think it's a she, and when I name my animals, I always tend to call them by something related to like the letter. So like this is a B, so I would name it Brooklyn. So Brooklyn's a beaver. If it was a whale, it might be Willie. Um, but we noticed this beaver run across the road with these branches. And that's when I started to do some detective work. And we noticed this beaver going back and forth and it's the middle of the winter. So what a beaver does is it actually finds the tree that it wants and it picks the right tree. And then it starts to figure out, well, if I cut it this way and nip at it that way, then I can get it to fall over this way. Beavers are great carpenters, and they can definitely cut a tree down quicker than I can with those sharp incisors. Man, let's watch this beaver take down this tree. A beaver's activity is not synchronized with the typical solar day, like most animals. That's because light levels in a beaver's lodge and underwater remain constantly low throughout a 24-hour day. Think about those days when you stay in bed all day. You don't really want to get out. Well, without cues from the sun, the beaver's natural rhythm or the regular day cycle changes, and its days become longer, often varying in length from 26 to 29 hours, the researchers say. And beavers are primarily Beavers are primarily a nocturnal, and they tend to be most active at night. But this beaver is working pretty hard, and wait a second. 
it's almost got all the way through this tree. Well, the crazy part about this tree is, as it's about to fall, the beaver looks at me, or at least measures it up, and I'm pretty sure that the beaver tried to hit me with the tree. And I'm not gonna lie, the beaver actually hit my hair as it fell down. I had to run away. Have you ever been that close to a tree falling that it actually hit you? The guy that was standing beside me in my way? I ran to the left or the right. I didn't run the entire length of the tree. Oh. But it was actually also being recorded from a goat. Almost hit me, Brooklyn. And the beaver doesn't seem to care. It just goes in, finishes its cut, and then it starts to actually trim down the tree and take the branches. Look closely, you can see the tree falling and me running. Man, that was a crazy day. Don't worry, the tree wasn't actually big enough or tall enough that I think it would have hit me where I probably would have moved sooner to a safer spot. But I do chalk it up to a life experience, or should I say a cool life experience. But as I was saying, the beaver doesn't try to take the whole tree. It just takes down small branches and it slowly works away and yeah, the beaver just drags it along. Again, busy as a beaver. That's a saying for a reason. Look at how hard this beaver is working just to get that tree into its lodge. Well, actually, it's probably a dam at this point, or I don't know. It's hard to tell where it's actually going. So we watch it as it crawls across the snow. It doesn't seem to be that graceful, and it kind of gets stuck here and there, but it's got a purpose, and it's going to get where it needs to go. Hard work pays off, and the beaver gets to the water where it's a little bit more graceful and it can use its powerful flippers and tail to help it a little bit more. Well, I came back to this spot in the springtime, and I got to watch this amazing thing happen. I noticed some movement in the water, and I was like, wait a second, that's a beaver. And the beaver started moving around, and then I noticed it come out of the out of the water and it did something and I couldn't really tell what it was doing from the angle I was so I just sort of sat back and I watched and it was amazing this beaver started swimming towards me and then it vanished and I was like oh well I guess I now have to count six seven eight minutes but I started to notice these mud clouds forming underwater and then the beaver reappeared and I was like What's going on? And so I sat there and this is when I noticed that the beaver was actually building its dam. Are you kidding me? I'm actually watching a beaver build its dam and it's bringing the mud and oh, and it pushes it and it packs it down and then it does it again. And it just repeats this process over and over and over again. It's amazing. It's said that if a beaver can hear the water running over its dam, that it will spend time trying to fix it. It's almost as if it drives that beaver crazy hearing that water once that dam is built. So the beaver is hard at work and it's probably getting it ready for protection from the wolves or any other animals or predators that might be in the area. And this dam is pretty big and it's going to create an awesome floodplain. I know that not everybody's going to like the floodplain, but the beaver is doing what it does and it's amazing to watch. I feel that it's got to be really hard work for a beaver to pick up the mud and then swim with it. I remember when I was a kid trying to swim to the bottom of the water and pick up those rings. As I got a couple of them, it became harder and harder. Imagine having short little stumpy arms like the beaver. And just when you figure out, or think you figure out what the beaver's going to do, and he's going to put it up, he's like, nope, I'm just going to drop this mud and I'm going to go this way. Well, he actually vanished shortly after this. One of the oddest beaver encounters I ever had was with this beaver and the goose. The goose was on the lodge and the beaver didn't like it and the goose didn't like the beaver. I didn't know that beavers and goose fought. 
I think they were fighting over this lodge that the beaver built. These lodges are dome-like and constructed away from the shore, normally forming islands that can only be entered from underwater. The lodge has multiple entrances and the living quarter is located above the water line. The walls are typically insulated with a small air holes at the top for ventilation. Hey Bones, it's time for another one. Ready? Going deeper. This time, we're doing beavers. This is a card game that I created with some of my favorite photos of Canadian wildlife. But back to the real animals. So you can see that this beaver picked the branch that it wanted and then it got stuck and was like, well, I'm just gonna move on. Or maybe it's because beavers have bad eyesight. I've noticed from watching them that they sort of just reach around and they're not really good at seeing things. They sort of guess at where they're going. Well, it's found a new branch, and I don't know why it picks this one over the other one, but it's awesome to see how quickly that branch can come down, and you can maybe understand how quickly a beaver can take down a forest. Don't worry, I went back this spring, well not this spring, in the fall time, and this area you could barely tell that there had been any beavers. It's pretty cool to see how Mother Nature has actually rebounded from this beaver experience. Back to the beaver's eyesight. Beavers actually don't have one eyelid or two eyelids. They actually have three. And that third eyelid is a transparent one, which means that they can see through it. This means that when they're swimming underwater, they can look through their third transparent eyelid and still be able to see a little bit. They're sort of like built-in goggles. That would be pretty cool to be able to see underwater. I know some people are able to open their eyes underwater. I'm not one of those people. It kind of creeps me out. I'd rather just wear a mask. How about you? Do you open your eyes underwater? I would if I had transparent lenses. Another thing that I've noticed about the beavers is they actually like to soak their wood. Yeah, so they'll cut the tree down and they just put the branches in the water and then they just leave them there. I think it's so that it becomes a little bit softer and easier for them to chew or maybe it helps the separation, but I've definitely noticed it. They will cut brand new branches and then they bring them down and then they move over to the next thing. It's kind of smart, I think, and maybe because it's winter, it maybe even expands when the water freezes in there. And maybe they're not even eating the ones from today or earlier today, but the ones from that they left overnight. That'd be actually pretty smart if the beavers were doing that. Unfortunately, I'm only just thinking about this now and not when I was watching and recording the beavers. What's crazy to me is while I was watching these beavers, I was literally standing in a ditch and hundreds of cars drove past me. Most of them just sort of looked at me. And I bet you they were just like, why is this guy looking and taking pictures of water? Or maybe they saw these big clumps of dirt because a beaver while you're driving kind of looks like a big ball of dirt if you're being honest. And I bet you there's maybe a hundred plus cars every day so 500, maybe maybe 600 cars drove past. Only one car stopped. And that family, they actually were like, this is amazing. And I pointed out and I explained a little bit about the beavers and I actually shared some of the videos I had taken. And it's actually so cool that they were able to actually experience the beavers and then see some of the footage and like go underwater with them. 
I don't know, I found it cool myself, and then when I ran into them later at some of the markets I was running, they definitely were telling me, oh man, about the cool beaver experience and getting to enjoy it, so, I don't know, it's kind of cool that I've met a couple of friends or randoms along the way and got to share these experiences. I remember one day I was leading this tour for this group of four ladies and we were talking about what animals they'd like to see and I was like, well, we can go look for some owls and then we can stop by this cool beaver spot. And when we got there, I could see a beaver from a distance and I was like, sweet. And what's crazy is we ended up actually seeing four beavers that day. So there was one beaver for each of the ladies. The snowies were out and the beavers were out. It made for a great wildlife tour and they were happy and I was happy and I got some cool footage and they got some cool footage. It just made for a great day. If you're interested in a tour or just coming to visit my presentation room slash natural history museum, feel free to reach out. One of the things that you notice if you watch the beaver is how slow and awkward it is on land. And that probably made it easy to catch back in the day. And unfortunately, the beaver population definitely took a drastic drop when the Europeans started to like the beaver pelts for the fur trade. And that drove the population of the beavers down. Don't worry, they're working their way back up. If you notice how slow and awkward they are on land, they might have been pretty easy to catch. When they're in the water, it's much harder to catch them. I really wish that I would have seen the big tree in the background getting chewed and come down. Unfortunately, I've only ever seen small trees at this spot, or the one that Brooklyn dropped on my head. But imagine seeing that big tree in the background. been a beautiful piece of work well I wonder what they're gonna do with it I wonder if they just leave it there or do they chew on it if you have any feedback or if you know what they might do with such a big tree please let me know because I've only ever seen them dealing with these little ones or again that medium-sized one nothing big like that I'm not gonna lie I do find it hilarious that the beaver has taken down such a huge tree, but keeps just going back for these little tiny branches. Again, maybe that's just because I want to see this big beaver taking on this big tree instead of these tiny little twigs, but wouldn't it have been amazing to see that tree come down? Oh, I can only imagine the sound it would have made. Do you think when the tree fell, that it spooked the beaver and he maybe jumped a little bit? Do you think that the beaver took the wood down by itself or do you think that a few beavers helped with that wood? I honestly am so confused. I actually think there's one beaver at this spot, but for a tree that size and for all the other trees that have come down, now I'm starting to think that maybe when I come to the spot that I'm seeing different beavers or maybe one's hiding and one's out and then one goes underwater and and I think I see the same one but it's actually a different one man I need to try to figure out how to tell beavers apart I can try to tell them apart by size I wonder if there are any other markings that maybe I could use to try to help me tell them apart. I know that I can't see their faces so well all the time unless their light is on them. So, wait a second. This one's tail is slightly different. It's got a mark on it. And now that I think back to earlier parts of the video, some of them have a darker tail and some of them have a lighter tail. Maybe I can start to identify the beavers by the markings on their tail. Oh, that could be really smart. Let's take a closer look at this beaver's tail. Do you see the marking at the tip and on the side? 
Maybe we can pay attention and see if we notice other beavers that have a different tail. Here's a question for you. Do beavers drink water? Because it looks like this beaver is drinking water. Or is it just trying to find a good stick? Maybe this goes to show that its eyesight isn't good. Maybe it needs its whiskers to be able to feel the twig or branch that it wants to chew. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's just getting a drink or do you think it's trying to find a twig? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're enjoying, please feel free to share this video. Also subscribe and check out some of the other videos that I've made on my YouTube channel or in this series of Going Deeper. This is the third episode in my Going Deeper series. Also, feel free to leave in the comments what animals you'd like to see. Where should I go next? What animals? While at the Big Nickel, I found this awesome wildlife book. Have you seen it? It even talks about beavers. So this is another different perspective of beavers. Seeing them from overhead and getting to watch them swim. Man, these ditch beavers that became river beavers, they really put on a show. And this one, it just sort of swam around and it let me watch and learn about how it moved. And then it was gone. And then we went looking around and we found this beaver. And if you listen carefully, on the beavers what is going on I'm learning so much and then I found the beaver again and it was deciding whether it was going to crawl on top of the ice and well it's much easier for a beaver to swim so it went under and then I noticed these little light things floating behind it and they looked like the stuff that was on the ice and then I was like wait a second that's beaver poo. Yep. So I guess beaver poo floats. It's probably based on all the wood that it eats, why it floats. I wonder how different the wood tastes to the beavers. Like the aspen, the willow, the birch, the maple. Like did they put things on them to make them taste better? Like some people put hot sauce on it. That's why I created my own hot sauce. Hmm. I wonder. What do you think? Well, I didn't include the beaver on my hot sauce, but I did include the beaver in my game. I wonder if the beaver would like to be in my game. Hey, Bobby, would you like to be in my game? Yeah, it's a wildlife game. It's kind of fun for kids and adults and older people to learn and keep their brains sharp. Oh, okay. Oh, you want to go and get ready and look good? That's fair. It's funny how different a beaver actually looks in the water and out of water. Look how graceful and sleek it looks now. It looked a little bit different in that last video. I wonder what beaver experiences I'll have in my future. I've been pretty lucky so far, and I learned so much from these ditch beavers. Thanks for hanging out with me, ditch beavers. This book, it costs one nickel. Not this size. It's gotta be that size. I'd been given this tip about a beaver in this area and I walked past this stream and I was like, man, it would be so amazing if the beaver actually like swam up this stream and came here. And then we went to the spot that the guy was talking about and we didn't see any beavers. And on our way out, I looked over and I was like, oh my goodness, there's a beaver. And it swam down the stream and it then ended up in the pool. and. I didn't know what was going to happen, so I just sort of stood there, waited, and it was like, what's going to happen? And then... It vanished. Where did it 
to go? After a little bit of searching, it was found on the other side. And then I started to follow where I thought it went. And I found this beaver trail. It's this beaver pathway. And it's pretty cool. So I tried to set it up so that it seems like we're the beaver and we're waddling our way through the grasses. If we were the first beaver, we'd probably have to make the pathway. But I feel that they follow the same pathway, the way that it's beaten up. Wow, those pathways, they're so cool. You can find them in the snow or in the grass. Man, I could follow them all day. Normally I only see one beaver, but occasionally I get lucky. The one time I went to see the ditch beavers, I'm watching this one beaver and it's sitting there and it's eating these little twigs and I look over and I see something at the side of the water and I'm like, wait, that's another beaver. And so I followed that one because it was on the move and it vanished into the culvert and as I got to the other side, I noticed that there were one beaver, but there were two beavers in that culvert and oh my goodness, it was amazing. There's two beavers on that side and one of them came in here and now there's a third beaver and I'm so excited and this one's swimming around and I don't know, I didn't realize there was more than one beaver. So I took a look back in the culvert and there was the beaver sitting there and he's kind of shivering or shaking. Maybe he was eating, I'm not really sure. And I left these beavers on this side and I headed back to see what was on the other side and the one that was had been in there swam and it went and met up with two others and I was like oh my goodness I now there's one two I don't know I ended up actually counting seven beavers in the ditch in one day this day I think there were only four or five but one day I actually saw seven different beavers hanging out in the ditch. Thanks for hanging out and enjoying the beaver experience with me. I hope you enjoyed the knowledge and stories that I shared. And until next time. But I want to leave you with one of my favorite beaver encounters. Seeing icicles on their whiskers to me was so cool. I went out this day because it was so cold and I was wondering if the beavers were okay. I could barely stand out there, but I knew that I wanted to see the beavers. And then when I saw them with their tiny whiskers being frozen, I had to hang out and see them. I only was able to last probably 10, 20 minutes and then I was gone. Oh, I feel sorry for the beavers on this day. Do you think the ice bothers them? Do you think it hurts them? Leave a note in the comment. Let me know what you think. Please check other Going Deeper episodes. Until next time, please stay safe, have fun, and enjoy the wildlife. Please subscribe, share, follow, and check out some of the other stuff I'm doing.